disfigured beyond that of any man, and his form marred beyond human likeness, so will he sprinkle many nations, and kings will shut their mouths because of him. What did we see last night, Chris, in the Passion? There were many who were appalled at him. They looked at him, and they were like, oh, gross, right? His appearance was dis so disfigured beyond that of any man, right? Yeah, like no one can notice him. Like, yeah. They didn't know who and he his was. form, meaning his body, was marred beyond human likeness. So will he sprinkle many nations. And when they say sprinkle, what they're talking about is how they used to sprinkle the blood of the sacrificial animals on the mercy seat on the, ten on the, the Ark of the Covenant. So oh. that was how they would forgive the sins and how they would cover over the sins of the nation of Israel, right? So, so will he sprinkle many nations. So, was the blood of Jesus sprinkled? Uh, yeah. Uh, quite a lot. And kings will shut their mouths because of him. You look at Herod Pontius Pilate. and Pontius Pilate, and like, the governors, guys, the governor of Galilee, and the, yeah, exactly. This guy's innocent, but I and Jesus that said man. things that just made them shut their mouths. In fact, Pontius Pilate washed his hands and said, Look, I'm done with this guy. I'm handing him over to you. My hands are clean of this. You you're taking him to the cross. It's you who it's sent him to the crucifixion. It's you do what he you want him to do. For what they were told not told, they will see, and what they have not heard, they will understand. So someday when those governors, those kings, come before God, they will understand what happened. And, and it almost looked like, in the movie, we don't know for real, but it almost looked like Pilate was concerned and really kind of understood more than yeah, he did. Yeah, he knew own. he shouldn't have done it, mm -hmm. but yeah. he was like, yeah. I'm hey, done with that. But he hey, knew he was done. having a lot of trouble. Either he, he feared that either... Jesus' followers would come up and cause an uprising, or the Jews who were telling him they, to, to kill Jesus would cause an uprising. So he was afraid either one was going to happen, and Caesar had already warned him twice. If there's any uprisings, it's on you. So he was in fear. Well, yeah. Now we get... He didn't make that choice, though, because then if Jesus didn't die on the cross, we would be in big trouble. Exactly. You would have nobody to cover our sins. Good call. And we would be I like, see it, 53. And we would be like, ah, ah! Okay. Yeah, I didn't know you were Who going has down. believed our message? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord means kind of God's acting upon things, right? He grew up before him like a tender shoot and like a root out of dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Which is why every time I see a movie about Jesus, I always look at who they have playing Jesus and I go, nah, he's too pretty to be Jesus. Because Jesus didn't have anything going on facially that we would look at him and go, well, that's a very attractive man. It just isn't. That's not what the scripture says. So, he had Can no I beauty. I noticed something. Yes. When they were showing the part of like Mary Magdalene in the movie, uh -huh. I noticed that Jesus looked different. He wasn't like the one in the passion. Really? He his hair was browner instead of blacker. Okay. I noticed. Might have just been the light. Mm -mm. There's not the bright sun. Well, Jesus is beautiful, but in all his glory. But he left his glory, right, to come here Correct. and be like a normal man, mm -hmm. just to yep. teach. Mm -hmm. And I so, have a green tongue. So again, here's what's being said hundreds of years before Jesus even came to do what he did. It says this. He was despised, hated, and rejected by men. A man of sorrows and familiar with suffering. Like one from whom men hide their faces. He was despised and we esteem him not. He was hated. They, just, they hid their faces from him and they gave him no... They showed him no love. Were they throwing things at him? Were they mocking him while he was carrying the cross, bleeding all over the place? Yeah. Yeah, bleeding surely, the streets up. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him and afflicted. You remember the Roman 
uh, the Roman guards that were just pushing him along, they were looking at him like he was just any other common criminal. In fact, crucifixion... They were a, using him like he was a dolly. Dummy they were. dolly. <laughs> crucifixion was not a punishment that was ever applied to anybody who had great, uh, great means. It, it was never applied to rich people. The rich people would be maybe brought to court and fined and sued. People maybe of medium station, not quite high station, but not poor. They would maybe be put in prison. But it was only the poorest of the poor that were crucified. Well, so they treated like, Jesus like he was a poor pauper. Right? What's a pauper? Somebody who's got no money and no no means. Well, they got a little bit of money, but only for the food and stuff. Right. Right, for the Just ministry. Just enough to get by. But he was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. Very good, Presley. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. You love that verse? And it makes me want to cry, too. by his wounds, we are healed. Very good. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. God laid on Jesus the punishment for our sins. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Did Jesus remain silent before a lot of the people accusing him? Oh, yeah. He didn't say anything, right? He didn't say a single thing. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, and who can speak of his descendants? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. He was assigned a grave with the wicked, and with the rich in his death, though he had no done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the Lord's will, it was God's will, to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life a guilt offering, we see his offspring and prolong his day. He will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the Lord will prosper in his hand. After the suffering of his soul, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors, for he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. So that was written hundreds of years before Jesus came on the scene, and was written before, probably before crucifixion was even invented. Pretty amazing. I'm like, who invented the stairs? Hmm? Who invented the stairs? I mm-hmm. still don't know who invented the stairs. <laughs> um, well... I definitely know someone from the Bible time, but not before Noah, because Noah, they still had stairs. Yeah. Because they had to get stairs so they could get all the animals and people up. So parents, remember, you can pour your heart out to your children, and they will still ask questions, like, who invented stairs? 